time on JK Garage, we install this OEM compass pack straight from Subaru and Jesse's 99 Subaru Forester. First things first, we need to take apart your center console and all this trim to get up to the radio wiring. So to do that, open up your center console. There'll be two screw covers here. Take those off and I'll uncover your two Phillips head screws. Unscrew those. And then the shrimp trim should pop out. You might need to rip your e-brake. This is my uh, voltmeter. We made another video on this. It'll be linked up above. Unplug the wires from it. If you have heated seats, they'll be plugged in here. You can set this trim aside. Then you might need to shift your car into neutral to take this next piece off. So put your key in. And then just pry up on here. Next, there aren't any screws holding this in, just you'll take out your ashtray and you should just be able to give it a good tug. Make sure your cup holder is closed. That should pop right out. And we can unplug the cigarette port. It's further back. Oh, and I guess the ashtray light. Ashtray light. Set that aside. And it's just four screws holding in. If you have a double din radio, but I have this compartment and then my radio. With all four screws out, your radio should come out. It might help to shift into first gear. So you gotta turn on your key. Disconnect the wiring. Sick cut. Perfect. Oh yeah? Alright, so next we need to take apart your dash compartment and the vents because we'll be trimming this to get rid of the compartment and that's where the compass pack will be going. To. So to do that, there are these two covers. You know, underneath the covers, they're they look head screws. And then that's the only thing holding this in. So they're should be clips on each side, so you'll want to put pressure on these sides and give it a good tug and pull it out. And then it has to come out a certain way because of the springs in the back. And there you go. There's a better view of that clip. Could you get the light over here? Don't break them. If you don't have the vents to go with the compass pack, you'll need to trim this so the shroud for the compass pack fits on there right. First we need to take out the vents to avoid damaging them. And they're just clipped on each side. Yes. Pop out those little tiny clips. So I'm gonna cut along the velvet line because that should be enough to hide my cut with the shroud. A couple ways you can do this is a little hacksaw. Uh, thousand degree knife challenge, just heat it up and zip it right off or use this thing. So cutting along the velvet line seemed to work pretty well because we take the vent piece and put it up against the shroud. Don't even see our cut and that's how it looked in the car. So if you don't have an aftermarket radio installed in your scoop, the wiring for this is pretty easy because it's just like 
a pass through and it taps off of the wires that it needs. This is the compass pack wiring. It plugs back right in the back of your after, into your stock radio. And then this would be coming from the car, but I had to cut it for my aftermarket radio. And it just plugs into this side. And then there's one other wire here, which is for the speed sensor cable, because it has some sort of animations going on. So if you got everything when you bought your compass pack, you should have gotten the outside temp sensor and the wire. We need to route this into the cabin to plug into the harness and there's a nice grommet right here make sure your brake boost here and kind of behind your intake just take it out there'll be this padding behind it you can drill a hole through it but mine's crap so we're just not going to use it so slice a nice little hole through this Just enough that the plug can fit through, but no water will get through. There we go. Then pull it all the way through until you get to the weather plastic protection. The weather pa plastic protection guard. Shove your wire in there. and then pop your grommet back on. So to route the temperature sensor wire, we went back along the back firewall, along the brake lines, up over here, tuck it in between the fender and the body, down here underneath the J-tube. Then you come through that little hole in between the radiator and the core support, come over here to the front of the core support, and mine actually didn't the bracket for the temperature sensor was broken on it, so we got creative with zip ties. And it should be facing so the temperature sensor is exposed underneath. For the wiring for the temperature sensor in the interior, you'll see it comes through that grommet in the firewall somewhere up there. We have it down here, and you can just send it, just send it right through there to the back of the radio, because that's where the wiring harness will be. So for the speed sensor wire, there will be a blue 24 pin connector under here, under your steering column shroud, and you need to tap into the green and black wire, which will go to this blue wire on your compass pack wiring harness. To match the rest of my interior, I'm actually going to change the lights in this to LED, or blue LEDs. And to do that, it's real easy when you have it exposed and the shroud off. It's just two little bulbs. And you take it out. It might be a little hot if it was on. And you pop in the LED. And these are T10, I believe. We'll check that. And if it doesn't turn on the first try, just take it out, flip it 180, and put it back in. When changing these bulbs, make sure you have both the incandescent bulbs, if that's what they're called, out. Because if you don't, the LED won't come on for some reason. And I'd probably just like wasted two LEDs trying to figure this out. With everything wired up, we can begin the reassembly. First slap your vents in it should just be a clip on each side I hope yep now that's in there you can screw in your compass pack and instead of the compartment having two screws this one has four and there should already be holes for the other screw it might be harder to screw because you're drilling through fresh plastic you can see the two holes there all right next your compass pack shroud 
I don't know where the screws are for that, so they're in here. You can see where we cut, you can't even see it. I'll plug your radio back in. Put it in gear. I'm putting it in gear. As the voices in my head are telling me. Where's the antenna? Forget the ground. And then you just send this thing back in there. Make sure all the wires are going in. Then you get your cover and cigarette thing. Plug your glove box light in that doesn't work. That's an ashtray. Your ashtray light. Send this thing in there. Send this on. And then just send this back right into where it goes. Perfect. And then, gotta shift it back into Noodle. back on. Make sure you get your wires out. For the voltmeter, check it out. For the voltmeter that you're going to watch our other video on. Reaper e-brake. Oh, first it would help if you plugged in. Come on, this is simple wiring. I said it in the video. Simple <laughs> wiring. Just plus and the minus sign. Gotta open up this thing and Send that off. And then you got these two screws. You got two extra ones there. For some reason. I don't know what those are do. Screw them in and pop the covers on and done. Ooh. Now with the compass pack installed, we are ready to calibrate it. All you have to do is press the adjust button. The directions should start flashing. Make sure to turn off all non-essential electronics. That's like any lights or anything you have in here. And then just do tight circles, slow circles, until it stops flashing. Glad we picked a bumpy part of this parking lot. There we go. All right, and to prove that it works, I got a compass on my phone here. Try to get them both in frame so you can see them both. We're facing east right now. Northeast. North. Northwest. West. Beautiful. To calibrate the altimeter, all you pretty much have to do is look up on Google Maps or an app on your phone your elevation, set it here with the set buttons, and then once it's set, it should adjust as you drive. That's it for this time on JK Garage. Leave a like, comment if you think this thing's sick. And subscribe if you want more. Also, you better find me one because I'm really salty that Jesse's Forester has one and mine doesn't. Whoa!